This is the Linear Algebra Lectures video series. You can find more information about this video as well as a link to the written textbook in the description below. Stick around to the end of the video to learn more about this video series and the associated teaching and learning tools I've created for it. Lecture 10, Homogeneous Linear Systems. Our objectives for this lecture are to understand the definition of a homogeneous linear system, identify trivial and non-trivial solutions of homogeneous linear systems, and represent solutions of homogeneous linear systems in parametric vector form. Remember that we've been talking about vector equations that have the form x1 times v1 plus x2 times v2 plus 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 xp times vp equals b. Now a solution of that vector equation is a value for each variable x1 through xp that makes the left-hand side equal the right-hand side. We can collect those values into a vector and think about the solution set of the vector equation, which is all vectors x that represent solutions of this equation. For example, consider this vector equation. When we say that 3, 0 is a solution of this vector equation, what we mean is that 3 is a value for x1 and 0 is a value for x2 that makes the left-hand side equal the right-hand side. We can plug those values in, do the calculation, and check that this is correct. Another solution is the vector negative 1, negative 2, and again we can check that by plugging in negative 1 for x1 and negative 2 for x2 and making sure that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Notice that the number of entries in the solution vectors in this case is 2, even though the vectors that actually appear in the equation have three entries. The solution vector is going to have one entry for each variable in your equation. Now we're going to start our study of solution sets with an easier special case. A system of linear equations is homogeneous if it can be written in the form ax equals 0 for some matrix A. In a homogeneous system of equations, each equation has a 0 on the right-hand side. Consider this example. We have a system of equations. We've got three equations and four variables. So this equation has the form ax equals 0, where a is the coefficient matrix. And remember that we talked about coefficient matrices in the previous lecture. Now you might notice that there's one trivial solution, which is to set all of the x's equal to 0. Because the right-hand sides of these equations are all 0, if we put 0 in for every x variable, certainly the left-hand side would equal the right-hand side. But we might wonder whether there are any other non-trivial solutions. How would we answer this question? Well, we follow the process that we've been doing all throughout this course so far. We set up and row reduce an augmented matrix. We look at each row of that matrix, rewrite it as an equation, and then get our general solution. Now, in this homogeneous case, we will sometimes want to write our solutions in what's called parametric vector form. We take our general solution and rewrite every free variable as that variable equal to itself. So here we have x3 being a free variable, so we write x3 equals x3. And now notice that every variable here can be written in terms of x3. x1 is negative 2x3, x2 is 3x3, x3 is 1x3, and x4 is 0, which means that x4 is 0x3. If we write that as a vector, we can write that as our solution vector x equaling the variable x3 multiplied by the vector negative 2, 3, 1, 0. We say that x3 there is a parameter that helps us define the solutions. And there wasn't really anything special about the parameter being x3 specifically. In fact, we might sometimes replace that parameter with a generic variable like t to understand that the solutions are just multiples of the vector negative 2, 3, 1, 0. We also might write the solution as the span of the set containing the vector negative 2, 3, 1, 0. Remember from our discussion in lecture 8 that this tells us that the solution set is analogous to a line in four dimensions. So the solutions of ax equals 0 can always be written in parametric vector form, where we write the solution vector x as a linear combination of vectors, where the free variables are the weights in that linear combination. The process is that first we find the general solution as we always have, but then we write the solution vector using the general solution and writing each free variable as being equal to itself. And then finally, we split up that solution vector and factor out those free variables. Let's work through another example. So here we have the matrix A, and we want to write the solution of AX equals 0 in parametric vector form and as the span of a set of one or more vectors. We would proceed by setting up and row reducing an augmented matrix. Now, in the homogeneous case, we will sometimes leave out that last augmented column, because in the homogeneous case, that last column is all zeros. And that last column is going to stay being all zeros no matter what row operations we perform. And so sometimes we'll leave it out entirely. I've left it in here, but you'll see us leaving it out in future examples. So we row reduce our matrix using whatever process we like, and then we try to interpret this row reduce matrix. 
We write our general solution, which in this case tells us that x1 equals 2x2 plus 3x3, and x2 and x3 are free variables. And now we write the solution in parametric vector form. We write the vector x equaling the variables x1, x2, x3. From our general solution, we know that x1 can be written as 2x2 plus 3x3. And then for the free variables, we simply write those as equal to themselves. So x2 equals x2, and x3 equals x3. Notice the way that I've shifted x2 to be underneath the x2 in the x1 formula, and the x3 being under the x3 in the x1 formula. What we can do is fill in the missing coefficients so that each variable is written as a combination of x2 and x3. So x1 is 2x2 plus 3x3, and x2 is 1x2 plus 0x3, and x3 is 0x2 plus 1x3. Now we split this vector up, putting all the x2s together and all the x3s together, and then we factor out the x2 and the x3 so that what we get looks like a linear combination of the vectors 2, 1, 0, and 3, 0, 1. This tells us that the solution set is the span of the vectors 2, 1, 0, and 3, 0, 1. And so this means that this solution set is a plane in three-dimensional space. Here's another example. Here we have A being a 4 by 6 matrix that's already reduced for us, and we want to write the solution set of AX equals 0 in parametric vector form. Keep in mind here that A is a coefficient matrix, not an augmented matrix. So when we write the equations corresponding to each row, we have to add equals 0 at the end. So you always want to keep in mind whether you're looking at a coefficient matrix or an augmented matrix when you're working through these kinds of problems. And that lets us write our general solution, which you see here. Now what do we do with this general solution to get the parametric vector form solution? Well, we write our solution vector x. We've got six variables, so this vector has six entries. And we use the general solution to rewrite each variable in terms of the free variables. And again, notice how I've aligned everything so that all the x2s are vertically aligned, the x5s, and the x6s. I fill in the missing coefficients, and then I split up this vector, and then factor out the free variables. And so in this case, the solution set is the span of these three vectors that you see here. So given a homogeneous equation, ax equals 0, the vector x equals 0 is always going to be a solution. Putting in 0 for all of the variables is always going to work, because the right-hand sides of your equation are all zeros. This is called the trivial solution. So the interesting question for a homogeneous equation is, are there any non-trivial solutions? Are there any solutions other than just putting in zeros for the x's that make the left-hand side equal the right-hand side? As we've seen, when we write our solution in parametric vector form, the solution set can always be written as the span of one or more vectors, and the number of vectors generating that span is the number of free variables in the equation ax equals 0. If we don't have any free variables, then the only solution is the trivial solution. The only solution is x equals 0. Now let's consider an application of these ideas. One application is to the field of computer graphics. Very often we want to render surfaces, and one of the simplest surfaces that we might want to draw is a plane. Now in three dimensions, we typically represent planes using equations like this, x minus 3y plus 4z equals 0. Now we can generate points on that plane simply by guessing values of x and y and computing the resulting value of z, but that wouldn't necessarily give us evenly spaced points on this plane. And that's important for rendering textures that we might want to put onto this plane for our computer graphics. And so we consider this single equation as a system of equations. We set up and row reduce our matrix, but there's not much row reducing to do here. This one row matrix is already in reduced echelon form. We write our solution in parametric vector form, and as before, we get a solution that looks like this. Now we can generate points on our plane by computing linear combinations of those two vectors. We call that a basis for our solution set. And as you can see in the animation here, the points are evenly spaced, but skewed. The points are skewed because the two vectors had a wide angle in between them. And so what we might ultimately want is for our basis vectors to be equal length and at right angles to each other. And this is possible using some techniques that we'll learn later in this course. Thanks for watching this video lecture. You can find links to the other videos in this series and to the written textbook in the description below. If you're an instructor, you can contact me for more information about the over 300 online linear algebra homework problems that I've created for the free MyOpenMath platform.